Good morning everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about the Fuji X100V. It's been a little over a year since I bought this camera and I've brought it to so many different places. So I wanted to give you guys a cinematographer's perspective on this camera, all my thoughts on it, what I like, what I don't like. So yeah, let's talk about the Fuji X100V. So why did I choose this camera versus the competition? So I bought this camera because of the look, Fuji colors, and the price. I got it for $1,100 used. I got the all black version, which is super sick. And those Fuji colors are phenomenal. I now understand why people are so psyched on the Fuji colors. When I shoot in RAW or in JPEG, the image just looks stunning. And the other cameras I looked at were the other X100s. I looked at the XE4 from Fuji. I looked at the A7C. Of course, I looked at the other hybrid cameras like the A7R, Canon R. But I looked at all those cameras, even the X-T4, the Ricoh GR3, and I end up narrowing it down to the Fuji X100V, and I am super psyched on my decision to get this camera. I went for the V because it was an upgraded version from the other X100s, it has a sharper lens, the colors are gorgeous, and it looks like a fun, inspiring camera to use. The X-E4 looks fun, but I didn't want to have an interchangeable lens, same with the A7C, I just wanted something simple with a fixed lens that was fun to use, and it looked awesome. And the Ricoh GR3 was kind of like the direct competitor with the X100, but it just didn't look fun to use. And that honestly played a big deal in why I didn't get that camera. So this camera has changed my view on photography forever. At first, for years, I viewed photography as sniping bangers with a G Master lens, a great full frame camera that had 60 megapixels, all these crazy features. That was such a shallow way of viewing photography. I only shot photos of the huge, mountaintop moments of banger light and banger locations. I never documented my daily life. I never documented around home because home wasn't epic like Yosemite is. Getting this camera, I was a little hesitant to go down this route of this style of photography because in my mind for so long, I was trained that I needed the R5 with these crazy lenses, but in reality, I didn't. And with this camera being so small and so fun to use, I find myself bringing it around more than I feel like I would bring any other camera around. It's so small that if I bring it and I don't use it, I'm not upset about it because it doesn't get in the way. And when I do use it, I feel like I'm in the moment, like I'm shooting on a film camera. And for me, I'm not a big film guy, but I love the vibe that film gives you where it's nice and slow and you're thinking about what you're documenting and you're thinking about each shot. Whoa, squirrels. This X100V gets me as close to the film style as I'd like to be. I don't shoot film, it's expensive, I'm not really the biggest fan of it, it's cool or whatever, but being able to have this camera that shoots gorgeous photos, shooting in RAW, come back and edit it right when I get home and have these amazing images that are super meaningful to me, that's really important. I feel like I'm now creating work that's more of these mundane in-between moments, but they're more meaningful to me than those mountaintop epic moments because I'm sharing those mundane moments with close friends, my wife, my family, and those moments are really meaningful. And I feel like I'd never be able to document those if I had an R5 because of how big it is. It's just a different mindset when you have a smaller camera and you treat it like a film camera. So yeah, when I got this camera, I had to take a step back and see what my needs are, what I'm looking to do with my career, and I came down to the conclusion that I want to be a cinematographer, I don't want to be a photographer, Photography is just a hobby. I want it to be fun for me. This camera is exactly what I needed. I didn't need this crazy big camera to bring around. The X100V is just so fun for me to use. And looking back at this year and some months of photos, these photos are incredible. I feel like I became a better photographer throughout this last year. And I feel like that has transferred really well over to cinematography. I feel like I've just been trained to look for light and look for compositions in not just these grandiose moments, but in the mundane, which I think is super beautiful and a really, really cool value to have. Something that's carried over from photography to cinematography. So like I said, this camera's really made me to appreciate the mundane and not just those bangers. And I've been able to create more work because of that. And another thing that I've learned is that having a camera that inspires you is super valuable. The Sony cameras and the Canon cameras are not inspiring for me to use at all. They're gorgeous, they create amazing images, but they just don't have character to them. It's the same thing with the Sigma lens versus these contacts lenses. It's a great lens, 
creates beautiful images, but there's just something missing there. And I feel like that's the same thing with this X100V versus the other mirrorless cameras. This camera is just so fun to use and it allows me to stay in that moment as if I had a film camera. And the way that you treat this camera has so much to do with it. When you have a camera that looks and feels good in your hands, I feel like you make better work because of it. With the A6500, I just wasn't inspired to shoot. I didn't really bring it around many places. I only brought it when I knew there was gonna be a banger moment. I feel like that mindset is just so freeing to create what you wanna create and document those moments that are so meaningful to you and the people around you. Having something small and fun to use, it's just something super meaningful and I now understand why people own cameras like these that are really inspiring to use. So RAW versus JPEG. At first when I got this camera, I shot in RAW and JPEG. I would shoot RAWs, and then I would shoot with film simulations from Fuji X Weekly. And over time, that was good. I would send those JPEGs over to my phone, and then I'd have the RAWs edit at home. But I ended up with two versions of each photo, so lately I just switched over to RAW only, and I've been having a blast editing inside a Lightroom. I made my own preset pack of all the different film profiles you get from Fuji, but I tweaked every single one of them to fit my kind of style, so if you want to check that out, there's a link down below for that, but I primarily shoot in RAW now, and these RAW files are stunning. Super easy to edit, you just throw into Lightroom, pick whatever profile you want, and then go from there. So how do I use this camera? I use it in so many different ways. I bring it on date nights, I've brought it to football games, to bars, breweries, road trips, on shoots. When I was out in Alaska and on the field trips episodes, I had my camera and then I had the Fuji slung around my body because it's really fun to be able to document your life as you're shooting like for work so being able to have my x100v around as i'm in these crazy locations it's just really cool being able to get some really cool bts and yeah it's been really fun to bring around on shoots i don't think i'd bring around an r5 or an r6 if i had one of those and then i've also brought around on backpacking backpacking weight's a huge thing and this camera is tiny it takes up no room and it's been really cool to be able to document those moments on the mountain. So yeah, I really treat this like a point and shoot film camera. I used to shoot all in manual, but I set it to aperture priority. Uh, there's a video down below if you wanna check out how I set up this camera fully. I go into all of that in more detail there. But yeah, like I said, this camera is so low profile that I don't get any looks when I'm out really anywhere. I brought it to a couple NFL games and I'm able to snap away some photos. I bring it to bars and no one seems to mind. With this camera being so sleek, it's just really nice to bring around. So what do I love about this camera? Well, exactly that. It's so sleek, it looks stunning. The all black finish is gorgeous. I love the Fuji colors, I love the raw. I love the film simulations. The film simulations in Lightroom specifically when you're able to like change all the different profiles and I just love how fun it is to use. I've never had a camera like this before that I want to bring literally everywhere. There's even moments when I'm out the door and I'm like, ah, I should probably go grab the camera. And if I use it, sick. If I don't use it, whatever. Like it doesn't get in the way. And the things I don't like about it, um, the video features suck. I didn't buy it for video, so I'm not too bummed on that. But 420 8-bit image, colors are terrible. It has internal ND for video though, which is sick, but it's super jittery, I don't really like it, and the autofocus sometimes misses as well. But other than that, everything else about this camera is phenomenal. For the accessories, I have a couple batteries. I honestly only use one, the main Fuji one that it came with. I have a lens hood, thumb grip, the soft shutter button from Artisan Obscura, and then a camera strap. But lately I've been rocking it without the thumb grip and the soft shutter button. So it's just the hood and the strap. And I've been really liking that, keeping it pretty minimal and really small. The thumb grip is really nice if you use it without a strap. And then the soft shutter button's nice, but sometimes it gets caught on the camera strap and it'll turn the camera on and it'll fire away like a few hundred photos throughout the day, which is kind of annoying, but it's not the end of the world. So yeah, just been rocking it pretty minimal. You don't need a ton of accessories for this camera. I think the lens hood and a camera strap is really all you need. And of course you need SD cards, but it's kind of a given, right? So do I recommend this camera? 100% yes. This camera is literally one of the best cameras I've ever used. It's so fun to bring around and the images are just super stunning. I think anybody could find use for this camera. If you're a hobbyist, of course you can use this camera. Cinematographers, it's a great BTS camera. If you have a family and you like photography as a hobby and you don't want to spend thousands of dollars, this camera is great for that too. If you're a photographer that has a workhorse of a camera and you don't really have a personal camera to bring around, I think this would be a great camera for you to pick up to document your personal life. I know plenty of people who own this camera that fit all these different boxes and that's the beauty about this camera. So many people can find a great use for this and 
make incredible images. I'm so glad I didn't fall into the trap that you need a professional camera for personal stuff. This camera really has made photography for me so fun. And it's changed my view forever on it. And it's made me a better cinematographer because of it too. And being able to document fun moments that are so meaningful to me is just really fun. I've even thought about making little photo books for our coffee table at home. Just because I'm documenting so many things throughout the year that it's really fun to be able to look back on and being able to have something tangible like that would be really cool to have to share with family and friends and eventually kids one day. This camera being so small and so cheap just makes me want to bring it everywhere. And if it gets chipped or broken or whatever, it's honestly not the end of the world. Okay, so on Instagram a couple weeks ago, I posted that I'm filming this video and if you have any questions to send them my way. And yeah, let's burn through these questions real quick. So Mr. Carnival says, still worth buying. 100% yes, this camera is phenomenal. I don't know if they're gonna have the six coming out soon. I would still get the five or any other X100 you can get your hands on. I would just pick one up and start making work and documenting your life. Now Juan Flame says, favorite recipes? What are your settings configured to? I don't use the recipes anymore, but I'll leave a link down below to Fuji X Weekly and I'll list some of the ones that I've used in the past. My settings, you can check out this other video down below on how I have everything configured. London Harmon says, tips on filming with it. Uh, don't, I'm kidding. It's not really the best camera for filming. It's decent, but the image is really bad. The colors are bad. The 8-bit 420 is super outdated. I wouldn't rely on it for any client work. Maybe if you're doing a personal thing, but check out this video down below from Mount Baldy. I filmed it all entirely on the X100V as a test, and I haven't filmed on it since, so. If that says anything, it's not that good. Leonard Harmon says, equipment and coloring it after. So I already said the accessories and then coloring it. I just shoot in raw and then use my presets to color it all. Clay Terrell says, Faye film simulations, link down below. He also says, what makes it better than other advanced point and shoots? I think the Fuji colors have a lot going for it and the way that it looks and feels as you're shooting. Like I said, the Ricoh GR3 just felt a little weird just looking at it. It didn't look inspiring to use, whereas the X100V looks like a film camera. And I've had a couple people come up to me and say, hey dude, I like your Leica. I'm like, thanks, it's a Fuji. They're like, what? So it looks really nice. To other people, it just looks like a film camera. So for people like me who aren't film photographers but can appreciate the medium, it's a great option for you. Zach So says, do you wish it was full frame or is the photo quality slash detail enough? Uh, I don't wish it was full frame because it would make it bigger and more expensive, but for the price, this camera crushes it at photo quality. You're not gonna be cropping super heavy. It kinda gets a little soft. I can understand why people want the Leica Q or the Q2. It's a gorgeous camera with high megapixel full frame sensor, but it's not for me. I think this crop sensor is enough. It's a 35 millimeter full frame equivalent lens. It gets the job done and for the price tag, you can't really ask for more. Jackson H Visual says, still using it every day. Do you feel like it's what you need? Do you want to upgrade? Uh, I am using it pretty much every day. I wasn't using it for a while. I was just kind of busy editing, so I wasn't doing much. But if I go down to San Diego and go surf with friends, or if I go on a date, road trip, when I go and shoot with Sam and whoever, I pretty much always have it in my bag, and sometimes I'll bring it out. Do I want to upgrade it? Nah, I love this camera. Surfion Zanuba says, do you love it? Do you think it's the only camera you carry every day? Yeah, I do love it. That 120 guy says, what style of photography is best suited to the camera? I think literally anything. Landscape might have a hard time with it because of the focal length. Sometimes you want a longer lens, but I think you can use this camera in any situation. Kevin Horseman says, been on the fence about getting one as a substitute to always shooting film. How on point can you get the film simulations? Also any limitations with the camera? The film simulations are really, really good. You can get it really close to film. I mean, you can make an image that looks like film, but when you compare it side by side with film, it might not be super close. You might have to tweak it around with editing. But for me, someone who has a point and shoot film camera, I like never use that camera anymore because of this camera. So yeah, but if you're a big film snob and you love all the details of film, you might be able to tell the difference. But for me, it's exactly what I need. Any limitations? I think just having a fixed lens is a big limitation, but also it's really freeing for me because I don't have to think about what lens to bring. Braden Shock says, how would you rate it as an everyday camera from one to 10? Any thoughts, concerns on durability and battery life? I'd say it's like a nine or a 10 honestly for every day. It's 
exactly what I need. It's not too small, it's not too big. The images are great. Battery life is actually really good. I really only use one battery like at a time. I had one battery during my whole trip to Mammoth recently, so that wasn't that bad. Um, durability, I bring it backpacking and hiking. I haven't tested the weather resistance, really. I've used it a couple times in the snow and in the rain and with the dust and it, I literally bring it everywhere and if it gets broken, it gets broken. But yeah, I haven't had any concerns on durability at all. Fanatic says any settings tips. There's a video that I did recently that you can check down below, but I pretty much just shoot raw and aperture priority. Clay Terrell says X100V versus previous models. Um, I think the X100V just really has the upgraded lens. I honestly forget all the upgrades that they had from the previous version. I know they have internal ND for video now. Yeah, I would get your hands on the 3, 4, or the 5. I think all those would be pretty good, but for me, I just want to have something newer. So the 5 was a good move for me. Do that. Can you focus here? Okay. Uh, Grisagors Saporia says video specs is it good enough to be a backup camera. I would never use this as a backup camera. Um, if you're shooting personal stuff, maybe, but the video specs aren't good. It shoots 4K as F log and it's 8 bit 420, so the image just pretty much falls apart immediately. The moment I put on a 709 LUT, the colors were just terrible, so. If you check out that Mountain Baldy video, I did all that in black and white because the colors were so bad. Jeremy Lee Taylor says, do you find yourself shooting in RAW or using JPEG film sims more? I find myself shooting in RAW only because of how fun it is to switch up all the film simulations in Lightroom afterwards. But film simulations are still really good. My wife Melissa uses the Portra 400 from Fuji X Weekly for all of her use stuff and it makes it really easy just to have a look baked in that I can just airdrop to her. So she doesn't really care about RAW, but I do. It's really fun to be able to tweak around and create different looks from it. Dave Kerwood says, how's the overall, Dave Kerwood? Dave Kerwood says, how's the overall weather resistance? I'd say it's pretty good. I've brought it out in snow and rain, dirt, dust, whatever. I've had zero issues with this camera. I think having the lens hood with the filter in the front helps with the weather resistance. So I'd highly recommend doing that. Dax Steven says, what are your favorite recipes for film emulations? Uh, I'll leave a link to all this down below, but I was using HP5, Portra 400, Tri-X 400, and I think Kodachrome 64. But yeah, I'll leave a link to all those film simulations down below. Edward Lee Film says, your favorite film or preset in camera? Like I said, those are all linked down below, but lately I've been using my own presets that I made. It's eight different looks. It's for Fuji cameras, only shooting in RAW. Yeah, I'd say that Porsche 400 or the 800. Those ones are pretty money. So yeah, that's the end of this video. Finally got to the end of it without any technical difficulties. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Leave a like down below if you did. If you have any comments about this camera, leave it down below. If you have any questions, send them over my way. And yeah, to close this video out, I am going to lay out all my favorite photos with some nice chill lo-fi beats and you can scope those out if you want those are all shot on this x100v over the last year and a couple months so i hope you guys enjoyed this video take it easy peace